everybody to Writing Investigator Success Stories for Grants uh, with Kathleen Webb. Kathleen, you are from Children First in Wichita, Kansas. Tell us just a bit about your organization. Yeah, so uh, we um, our mission is to help children be successful in school. And it's kind of a broad mission, but, uh, you know, we do... Uh, we do coats and we do backpacks and uh, we have hire social workers for neighborhoods. And um, so we started working with a lot of parents, low-income parents, right? And we would help them a lot sometimes. Yeah. And then we discovered like, even if we helped them like three or four more months later, they were back, you know, at the parish office or asking the community to help with rent. And we're like, oh. You know, we we helped them. We took some pressure off their shoulders, but we didn't help them get out of poverty. Mm -hmm. And that just, we like, there has to be a better answer. And that's what we discovered getting ahead. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Well, I'm going to hand this over to you to talk about writing investigator success stories into grants for getting ahead. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So um, we were... Children First is just in its infancy uh, for getting ahead. In August, we had our, we graduated our very first class. And yesterday, so here is October, we started our, our, our second class. And so we're learning. And because I'm a grant writer, because I'm an executive director, as I learn, I want to share. I want to share with all of you. And then I want feedback from you guys too. Like, like, what are you doing that's working or not working or that kind of thing like that. So, so I'm just, I'm here to share. And I am in love with getting ahead. You know, like I said, we had our first class. So, so excited for that. And so then I thought, well, how do I take one gentleman's success story and put it into grant writing and then be successful at that? And so that's what I'm going to share. I'm going to share what I learned. So we're going to get started. So oh, let me move my stuff here. Okay. So um, so in this session, you're going to walk away with a one-page um, summary about an, an investigator story. Okay. And my goal here is I want to be able to, to use this in multiple ways that we're going to talk about. So I'm going to write a one-page about about um, an investigator who graduated. Then I'm gonna show you what a letter of inquiry is like for a small family foundation. And we're gonna interject that story, his story into that letter. And then I'm gonna share with you what I'm doing as far as the grant budget and how I've been successful uh, with that. So that's, that's the objectives of this little 15 minutes that we're sharing together. So one page um, story, about an investigator and and his journey, right? And so I do this, um, it's one page and with his photo and you'll, you'll see that. Then it's a, it becomes a template for me to use to copy and paste into grant narratives. And then I can also use this in my annual report for the organization. I can use it in marketing materials if I want to. It becomes an easy tool for me to, to move quickly and get things done. And it's because it's already written, it's already been edited, it's already ready to go. Okay, so how do I write this? It's just like writing a novel, right? Like right, if I, I, I've never written a book, but if I was gonna write a book, this is what you do, right? It, you have a problem, then you have an intervention, and then you have the results or what is the impact. And so those are the sections that, that we write for that. So here's Norman. This is the this is our, our graduate. Norman says, I was referred to Children First through my best friend. Uh, my family was in crisis because the apartment was sold. They were not renewing leases. Then he loses his job and his world falls apart. And that night he was going to sleep in the car with his wife, his baby, and his toddler. Oh, crisis, right? This man is in crisis. So What's the intervention, right? We come in and we, um, it's an amazing, it's an amazing story. Um, I'll tell you separate from this part is I have a board meeting and I get a phone call from a physician that says, I have a house. Would you like to put someone in my house? And I was like, hey, I have a board meeting tonight. And so, 
you know, I've said, hey, to the board of directors, hey, can we put somebody in this man's house? Anyway, they said, get an attorney, write an MOU, all that stuff like that. That night, we got the keys. That night, we met Norman. He was going to have to sleep in his car. They got in the house. Oh, oh. <laughs> beautiful story. Anyway, okay, back to the, what, you know, his story. So he said, I, you know, I was offered, uh, offered temporary housing through a generous donor. And then 30 days later, um, his car gets repossessed and we were able to help him get that back. So we were able to stabilize him. We were able to get him with an attorney and who, cause he had some, he just needed to ask an attorney a couple questions. It was stopping him mentally from working, right? She answered his questions. He was ready to go to work. Wow, boom. So then what happens? So then um, he said, I was able to stay in the house. And then I was able to start getting ahead, right? Actually, it's kind of a condition of him staying in the house, but you know, uh, anyway, it's all good, right? <laughs> so, but anyway, he starts taking the class and he says, you know, at first, you know, I came for that $20 gift card and, you know, someone said, hey, you wanna come for a gift card? And he said, yeah, but you know, he got in there anyway. He said he started to learn about middle-class values and what a significance that was and hidden rules about like, it's important to show up every day to work. And if you're gonna be late, call your boss. You know, and no one had ever, ever told him that before. And so, cause he comes from poverty, right? And so it's relationships that are more important. Anyway, so he learned the hidden rules. And so then he graduated and this is an amazing story, right? So he graduates, and then it's Labor Day. And then on that Tuesday, he started a job in a major manufacturing company making $19.50 an hour. He has moved his family out of poverty in a middle class. Boom, right? Wow. <laughs> so he won. Boom, right? He, and, you know, he said, when I, when I talked to him, he said, he said, I've, I've never felt this way about a company before. I want a 401k. I want a dental insurance. I want all of that. I mean, it's just such a beautiful, impactful story there. There he is with this certificate. It, like I, I graduated. And so, so he's working now. And so, wow. Anyway, so we, we put all that into to one, one page. Like I said, I can use this in the annual reports at the end of the year. Well, this is a format that we're going to use so that everybody that we write this story has the same kind of format to them. And so they kind of all look the same. Marketing people tell you that they have to kind of look the same. And so, so that's that. Okay, so now what did I do with that now that I have that document? Now we're going to talk about grant writing. Okay, so we're going to make what they call a letter of inquiry. Now this is for family foundations or foundations where there's not an application form. If they're like, just send me a letter. Okay, so this is, we're gonna just write him a letter and we're gonna ask him for money and we're gonna, for getting ahead and we're gonna thread in Norman's story in, into this. So, so parts of this um, grant application is, you, you always start out with the need and then what, again, Right, we're writing the story, right? Sounds just like what I just wrote. Need, intervention, impact. The only difference is now we're adding, we're gonna ask for the order now as a part of that. So here's, here's what it needs. So I took Norman's first person story and then I made it into more of a narrative. And so when I said need, I start out right away with Norman's story because it's intriguing, right? Because it's like, like People that are reviewing this are trustees of foundations. They're people from upper middle class to wealth, but they're still human, right? And so it's easier to grab their attention with a story. And so I started it out with Norman's story about they're going to sleep in the car. So compelling. And then from there, I'll transition into um, more of the, of the facts, you know, like, you know, the cost of instability for low resource family takes its toll because in my program, you know, like I said, we're talking about trying to get students to do better in school. So I'm talking about parents and families, but you would adjust this to your world there. Um, and then, so that's my intro. And then I would talk about local data, you know, as a part of that community. So you're going to transition into like an opening statement and then more into the facts. 
And then once you get that, that piece done, then you go into your program design, your intervention. You know, what are we doing here? And so um, I say the program design, I say, you know, requesting funds for one quarter of um, getting ahead classes that will impact 10 to 12 under-resourced adults who are like Norman, right? Because I, I want to keep threading in Norman throughout the whole letter process. Who are living in poverty or unstable situations who have a desire to change and become more resilient, self-resilient. Now, I highlighted in red self-resilient because I am seeing more kind of that word in grant language that I haven't seen before. And so if a funder says they want to do programs that teach people to be more self-reliant, um, this ask them for getting ahead money. So it's just kind of a trend that I'm kind of starting to see. So I highlighted it in red there. So then at that point in my letter, then I explain what getting ahead is. And I'm not gonna read all this because you all know what getting ahead is, or if you don't, you can read the, the paragraph there that describes you know, um, you know, what, what, it, what the process is. And if it, I was sending this to a bank, I would also talk about how they can get the CRA credits. Um, Lynn, or Ruth, do you remember what those are? CRA, um, I can't remember what that, it's banks, banks get yeah, special credit for that, right? Yeah, it's a uh, community, I'll, I'll Google it, yeah. Yeah, I should have, if I went down that road, I should have remembered what that is, but. <laughs> It's important to banks to put in a little paragraph about that. Um, anywho, but this is this is the part that we explain what getting ahead is about. And then the results, you know, making a difference. And because children first, we haven't done too many getting ahead. I don't have our own data. So I use the national data from Charity Tracker. And as I as we begin to develop and get more successes, then that I would put in more, uh, more like Children First was able to accomplish this. But until I have it, I don't. And so then I use this, um, I just use the national data there that shows the success of this program. And so um, also now I'm gonna tell a little bit more about Norman's success because again, I'm trying to, I'm you know, weaving in Norman throughout my whole grant proposal because they've already connected with him. We've already told him he's gonna sleep in the car. We already saved him from that. So what's Norman's result? And then that's when I talked about what he learned in the class and then how he's been able to get a higher wage now and moving his family into middle class. So that's when I quote Norman in my document here. And then I'm prepared to, I'm ready now to ask for the order. I'm ready to ask for the gift. You know, thank you for your consideration. You're gonna make an impact on people just like Norman. I wanna give you some other kind of little, little things I've learned along the way um, of my journey here. And I am being successful asking for one quarter at a time for getting ahead. So I ask for the whole year, it's too much, it's too overwhelming for people, it seems to be. It's too big of an ask uh, for the for these more private foundations. So I kind of narrowed it in more just to ask for one quarter. And I'm I'm being successful with this. And people are either funding that whole quarter or they're funding half of a quarter, which I I, I consider that a anytime I'm getting money, it's a win. But anytime someone says, I'll take half, I'll take it, because I'll still, I'll, then, I, then the next grant I write, say, I could say, I have half, will you either fund a whole or, or fund a half? So, so that's kind of how that's looking. I wanted to show you what that budget looks like. Um, so, and uh, I in done earlier sessions on developing grant budgets, and Ruth has a copy of that. And so if you want to go back and Hear what I had to say about that. And look at my formulas, but but here you can see um, that for salaries, what I do in this quarter is I put in the executive director time. That's the time that I'm going to be supervising and uh, providing guidance. So that's how I fund my salary as an executive director. Is I just keep throwing it into every grant that I write, whatever, however much time I'm going to work on this project. And so for this, I said two hours a week. 
for the 13 weeks. And then the program director is in there. And then I've started putting in there money for facilitators because their time is valuable. They've graduated, they've, we've trained them. And so I want to, in, uh, I want to, I want to put them on the payroll. And so um, I, I put them in and they come, they facilitate the class, but I also put some time in there to help for them to help recruit. It, and um, so um, I'll let you know how it's working. Like I haven't, like I've got the money now, I'm ready to go. I haven't done it yet because now we're just on our second class. But it's important to me to, to pay people and to help lift them out of poverty, right? And so this could be a, this could be a first job or a gap job for somebody that gets them further in, in the middle class. And so that's what I did is I put them 13 weeks, 10 hours a week, $18 an hour in my community, that's a good wage. And then I, um, we do one in English and one in Spanish. And so people that have that Spanish skill, you know, it's a, a beautiful thing. We come in, how it's working is we're eating the meal together and then we separate out and so we have some people in, who wish English in one room and some people who are more comfortable learning in Spanish in the other. Uh, one of our facilitators that we're, um, gonna, that she's gonna, one of the graduates who's gonna become a facilitator, she learned, um, she was at the English table, but she speaks Spanish. So now she's coming again and now she wants to go to the Spanish class to see if there's anything different. So, you know, great. I'm so excited for that. I'm so excited for that initiative, right? So. Anyway, so that's that's the salary part of my budget, and I put in those benefits um, into it, and then I need to put in the books. And so, um, for one quarter, we'll have twelve people in English, twelve people in Spanish, and then uh, with the incentive cards, what we did is we do twenty dollars in um, fuel only for uh, one, and then the next one we still add. $5 in the fuel because they still got to get there, but we have a donor that's giving us hygiene bags. And so we're going to give them hygiene bags. Uh, so it kind of reduces the cost of the gift cards. They're still getting in the incentive and they're still getting fuel cards to be able to get there. So that's what we're doing. And then uh, childcare, we put in a small stipend for someone to take care of the, of the childcare. The food I'm going to talk about here in a minute, and then location is free. Um, so there's no cost there to us. Uh, in my budget, I also put in what I call barrier reduction funds. Um, this is to stabilize people who are who are taking the classes. Maybe their car will break down during that 13 weeks, you know, or maybe they um, are about ready to get evicted, you know, or they need to, you know, something to help them continue to be stabilized. Um, anyway, I I put it in there, and it's a thousand dollars, and uh, we'll use it. And then uh, technical support. I recently learned about Emerge Solutions and um, I'm learning about um, Charity Tracker. We definitely want to be a part of that. And so um, there's some fees associated with that. And so I put that in there too. So that's my, my whole budget for the quarter. Uh, it comes out to be just a little under 18,000. And um, I'm being successful. People are like saying, yes, we will fund this. Um, so some other things we're doing, just gonna throw that out there to what else we're doing is we also have a food program and we did a lot of food boxes. And one of my staff said, you know, these large families, we, um, you know, there's just so much in the chaos of the moment. They're working a lot. Their kids aren't eating very nutritionally. And we thought, well, we could go buy you know, like pre-packaged lasagnas. And then we looked at the sodium content in them and we couldn't do it. We could not do it. And she said, look, you know, I, I used to work in a kitchen, I'm comfortable. Why don't we just make our own casseroles? We have, we have some education gardens and we'll take the food out of that and we'll start making our own casseroles. And I loved it, right? Well, guess what? The food that they get at the gain ahead classes are these frozen casseroles that we are making. <laughs> and we have people that, who are in the class will come help make the casseroles. It's a beautiful thing, you know? And so we, we cook the casseroles and they come, they eat the food that they just, you know, they cooked. And, and you know what? If they have some food issues that week, they take home a casserole. 
So it's it's been beautiful. She cooks, she does it twice a month and she's making um, 16 to 20 casseroles uh, during that time frame. So it's, you know, it's a good thing. So that's been kind of fun. And uh, the other thing that we recently learned about is that um, many of the, any, many of the investigators owe child support to the state. And so the state of Kansas uh, for the uh, Department of Children and Family Services, DCF, if you complete getting ahead and you notify them, they will knock off some money off of what is owed the state. So uh, we just had today, they just reduced the amount of uh, child support owed to the state for two um, individuals, they knocked $500 off for each of them. And so you go, well, 500 might not sound like a lot, but if you're making close to minimum wage, how long does it take you to get $500 of money that isn't designated for anything else that, that could help? And then the state of Kansas looks at it like, hey, you're trying to reduce your debt that you're owed to the state and they're more lenient to you because you're taking initiative, right? And so that's a beautiful thing. It was super easy for me to email the, them and ask if we could be on this list. They said yes, and it was super simple uh, to, to do. And it's just another benefit that you can put on your brochure for someone that's looking at getting ahead. You're like, hey, I can even get my, this amount you know, reduced that I owe the state of Kansas. So I think it's pretty cool. I think it, it's Department of Children and Family Services are probably everywhere. I bet that they have this program in most places throughout the United States. So anyway, that's kind of what I learned there. I think I'm done talking. <laughs> so. Wow, there was some great stuff in there. Um, any questions? Comments? So Ruth has, Ruth has the copy of the budget, so you can see it in its entirety in an in Excel document. So and it's got the, the formulas in there, so you can just tweak it your, to yourself. And then um, she has the uh, Word document for the letter of inquiry, so you can just copy and paste it away, you know, so. Um, I, and I. I put my email address in there. I have a few questions for you. So uh, the Kansas Department of Children and Family Services, what, what a great program, but how did that get established that getting ahead could reduce amounts owed? Yeah, so I just emailed them and I said, this is what we're doing. And uh, will you consider this on your list of qualified um, uh, programs. So they and, have qualified programs and you ask if getting ahead could be a part of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So other people in Kansas that are doing getting ahead could contact the Kansas Department of Children and Family Services and, and say they have some getting ahead graduates. Yes. Okay. It was so easy. They just needed their name, last four, their social security number, birth date, and um, when when they graduated okay. and they looked them up and they emailed me today and said, this is their case numbers and this is how much we're gonna take off. We're gonna take $500 off and you can tell them that that's a done deal. That's fabulous. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's fabulous. Yeah. Okay, casseroles. I didn't see any money in the budget for casseroles. So the volunteer is doing, she's, she's the budget. <laughs> for the casserole yeah well we haven't since we have another food program that came out of that budget ah okay yeah, you know. okay so yeah. so she's doing the 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 labor along mm -hmm. with the getting ahead investigators yeah. and the mm -hmm. food um the food itself the ingredients come from another budget Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, now asking for one quarter, have you had, I know you're just starting, have you had the opportunity to go back to a foundation and say, you know, here, here's my Norman success story. Will you fund a second quarter? Yes. I have a pending right now. That and they, okay. Yeah. 
yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then tell me about the recruiting piece that you're paying um, these graduate facilitators mm -hmm. to, to recruit. Mm -hmm. How are so they, they doing? Yeah. So they have friends, you know, and they, they have friends that, you know, and, you know, we help when we help one family, we get a phone call, like we get lots of referrals from people, Sure. you know, and, you know, we're to the point where, you know, um, we, we are always talking about getting ahead to, to everybody, you know, but the, um, uh, the facilitator, like I said, they have friends. And so usually they end up recruiting their friends. Okay. They give them rides, you know, I mean, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's just, and it's just going to grow. It's just going to grow. Yeah. yeah. I'm just on this fast bicycle to try and stay ahead of them. <laughs> well, maybe you should get an electric bicycle. <laughs> Uh, um, so I put in the chat, uh, the Community Reinvestment Act, that's the bank. Thank you. Yeah. We also shared Norman's story on the AHA Process blog. And so I put that link in okay. and um, put in, you know, my email address. One thing when you were talking uh, about the letter that you write to foundations, uh, I've, I've read a little bit lately about people saying, you got to start with the heart. And that's what it reminded me of when you started mm -hmm. with Norma, Norman, you, you had that pull to the heart mm -hmm. um, to serve in that way. Yeah. So uh, any other comments or questions? Yep, very good information. Thank you. Thank you. I'm around. If you have questions, you can always reach out. Uh, Kathleen, do you want to put your email in the chat? Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well, we'll wait for that email to pop in, but we thank everybody for their time. I will be putting this um, out on uh, the YouTube, the AHA Process YouTube page. If you wanna share it with other individuals in your community or organization, and we just appreciate you being with us today. So thank you all. And Kathleen, thank you. Because it was very, very good information. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. All right, you bye too. Bye-bye. I'm going to end the session for all. Thanks.